Hello, this is Wampire. I want to talk to you guys about several things today, but mainly the focus is on the martial path. Now, um, I think it's easy to understand that everybody has a different martial path, but that's too vague. That doesn't really help. So uh, I'm here to break it down to the essence, especially if you're interested in martial arts for practical application. In other words, you intend to use it for a real life self-defense, right? Um, okay, so with my student, uh, one of my students, a guy in Japan, um, I taught him traditional basic eskrima, so that's one half, and the other half is I taught him the vampire method of eskrima, which is my method, modern eskrima. Um, and so now he's at a point where I'm encouraging him to... Uh, make it his own. In other words, kind of like um, make his own style, which the moment I say that people misunderstand and they think, you know, that they're inventing a brand new style and, and this and that. And you really need to get that out of your head because so many people don't get it. Um, I just received a comment not too long ago and I was clearly, clearly like, man, this, this person doesn't understand this. Okay. So making your own style is a big deal. And if you're a beginner or even if you've been doing martial arts for a little while, you know, a year or two, you're not going to be making your own style. Okay. That's, that's just way too premature. So it's just easier if you just get it out of your head. Don't think you're going to make your own style. Think that that's super arrogant and that is super egotistical. It's just, once again, it's easier to think of it that way, and, and I recommend that, okay? What I'm talking about is you're making it your own. So this is like you buy clothes, right? Already made clothes, and then you go to the tailor and have it like fit you. You know, adjust, make small adjustments. That is what we're talking about. Um, or it's like if you buy a car and then you start breaking it in, you know, you put a bumper sticker on there, um, you might tint the windows, uh, you might change the stereo system or, <laughs> you know, maybe not today, but, um, uh, you know, put in the air freshener that you like. So those are things that, that you're making it you. And that's the exact same idea. And, and that's what I mean um, by making it your own. Your custom tailor fitting it to you, okay? And in that process um, with my student, uh, one of the things that he mentioned was that the laws in Japan, so he's in Japan, I'm in the U.S., I'm in Texas. So the laws in Texas and the laws in Japan are very, very different. Um, you know, as far as like weapons go, I'm what I can do is so much more than what he is allowed to do legally over there. It's much, much more strict in Japan. So for me, um, carrying, you know, all kinds of uh, self-defense weapons, items, you know, tools is, uh, it's normal and, and it's a lot easier for me to do legally. And for him, it's very limited. So he was talking about, uh, he, for his own method, right? Making it his own. So getting the eskrima that I taught him and now how is he going to use it in a self-defense situation? One of the things that he was thinking was he has like a, um, uh, like a bag that he carries, almost like an Indiana Jones type of bag, uh, a man purse, so to speak, right? So he carries that everyday carry for him. So he wants to use that for self-defense. And I have shown you guys in the past like um, how you could get like some sort of uh, belt bag or bag and, and, and hold it and use it to where you're doing the diamond defense which comes from the force to force block. So we're talking about eskrima, traditional eskrima techniques used for self-defense, right? And so for him, he wants to use what he carries, which makes sense. That's what he normally carries and he wants to figure out a way to make that optimal. And for me, 
Um, a belt bag is something that I carry. So, um, and, and also kind of like one of those student bags where you could put your laptop on. So those are the two that is common for me. And those are the two that, that I've adopted and works for me. So in his case, it's different, right? So he has more like the Indiana Jones bag. And he also mentioned a rucksack um, that he actually carries that quite often. So for him, that's what works. And uh, so he's trying to figure out how to use that for self-defense using what he already knows, which is his main is Eskrima, right? And I encourage him to do that. Don't do exactly what I do. Make it your own. So, you know, in his case, there are different tools, right? There are different types of bags that he, he uses in his everyday life. So he's going to experiment with that. Good for him. I encourage him. Now, at this point, all of those where he's going, okay, the laws in Texas and the laws in Japan, very different. So I want to do this. And those are all ideas, okay? Ideas are like, they're in your mind. They're fantasy, right? What you want to do is you want to make your ideas tangible. Every martial artist, that's what you should be doing. So you got all kinds of ideas in your head. You train and you learn about things and you go, okay, what if I did it this way? What if that, you know, this would be better. This would be cooler, I think, or whatever it is, right? Those are all ideas. Those are all opinions, right? Now you have to make that into a hypothesis and then change it into a theory. That's the way science works, right? So a hypothesis is you get an idea and then you come out with a statement and now you got to test it out. You got to do experiments. You got to be very, very thorough in your thinking. And as you experiment, your original idea can change. But through your findings, your consistent findings, you start to formulize what is called a theory. So a theory is something that is tried and tested. Uh, people use the word theory incorrectly so many times. They go, I have a theory. No, you have a thought. Okay, that's an idea. That, it, that has not been tried and tested, right? So that actually usage of the word is incorrect science-wise. So in science, you know, you come up with a theory after thorough experimentation and then, you know, it needs to be universally accepted. In other words, in other universities and colleges, people replicate your experiments and they go yes i came with the same conclusion so other people need to test it out as well and this is how we know what we have is consistent that it you know it becomes proven in that sense that you get a consistent answer right and what i'm noticing in the martial arts world is people don't thoroughly test enough we should be following the same formula as in these universities and colleges. And we don't. People make up stuff and they say stuff and they go, yeah, that sounds good. And they don't test it out enough or if they even test it out at all. So I'm encouraging my student, okay, so you got these ideas, now you got to formulate a hypothesis, right? And then you got to experiment in your group in your training group and then from there you know you start telling it to the world and have other people test it out like I do on YouTube I tell you guys what I do my findings you know and um, I hope you guys test it out use it don't don't just leave it for okay I learned this so I'll be able to use this in self-defense in a real-life situation how do you know you got to test it out you know just because it worked for me doesn't mean it's gonna work for you and, you know, even if it will, because you could use the argument that we both have two arms, two legs, so you're human, I'm human, so if it works for you, it's going to work for me. No, because we're not at the same level, okay? So I put a lot of effort into coming up with the hypothesis and then testing it out and then making it into a theory. So there was a lot of work I put in. So maybe at the beginning it wouldn't work, but after all that work, I'm able to use it in a self-defense situation. I did that work. So even if I explain it to you, you haven't done the work. So if that makes sense. 
it, I hate to say it like this, but you know, cause this is so abstract. It's, it's so, so maybe, you know, I put in all the work and I became a level six, right? You didn't put in the work. So you're a level three, right? So you cannot use level six moves at level three. Okay. Um, so that, I hope that gives you like a simple idea. So you got to do the experiments. You got to do, um, you have to experiment, test it out and put it into your muscle memory and experience it because experience is one of the best teachers by you replicating these experiments you gain valuable experience <laughs> and you once you do that it becomes yours you know not just you're regurg you're regurgitating you're parroting what i'm saying because that that really to me has no value Okay, uh, I'm sure there is value, but it's a very low level to me. So I encourage you guys, you know, and, and that's what I'm trying to do with my students, you know, and, and um, get them, the ones that, that come to me in person, I'm trying to get them at a level as fast as I can so that we can experiment because, you know, having this, the teachers here, the students here, this relationship to me is basic. It is a basic level. I don't want that. I want everybody to be lab partners and we're working on cutting edge stuff and we're going, will this work? Well, how can we make it to work? I want to be there. You know, me just teaching old stuff and like, okay, come on, you can get that. You know, that's, that's almost like, um, I don't mean to sound rude, but babysitting stuff. You know, my goal is to get you, you know, you're only as good as your weakest link. So I want to raise the bar, you know, that that's what I'm trying to do. Um, so I'm, I am not interested in, you know, you, you learn from me, you're going to be my vampire student, you're going to be my vampire brand, and we're going to make affiliates and spread the vampire name. I'm not interested in that. I am interested in experimenting and raising the bar for society. That's what I'm interested in. Okay. Um, so with my student, he wants to use these different tools than me. Great. Go for it, okay? I want to. I want to know what he finds. And even then, even though we're using different kinds of bags, there's still commonalities, and I want to see what they are. You know, uh, those are all new knowledge and input for me, and to better for me to better understand what I do, and also for him to better understand what he does. So I'm very excited about that. And so there should be a ton of questions for him because he's he's new at doing this, and I'm I'm trying to encourage him to to do you know, to go into this. So now with these new bags, how do you grip it? You know, what's the best way to grip it? And and he's gripping it one way, which is, you know, the most logical way, but don't stop there. You know, you should, you should question yourself and go, is there a better way to grip this thing? You know, is there something more I can do? You should constantly be asking yourself questions, no matter what style it is you do, you should be constantly asking this to yourself, wrestling, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, boxing, uh, kung fu, you know, karate, aikido, whatever it is you do, you should be asking these kinds of questions, but make sure you get the basics down. So you shouldn't be immediately starting off this, this way, or even if you are kind of start thinking like that, keep it separate from your basics. So when you go into class, do the basics, you know, empty your cup so you could taste their tea. And you want to taste as much of their authentic tea as possible. So don't pollute it with, with your crazy ideas. And then when you get home, now it's experiment time. You could, you could, you know, think wild stuff. What if I put in this capoeira move? You know, whatever. You, you know, whatever you want, that's fine. But keep it separate, okay? Very important to keep it separate so it doesn't get jumbled up. And also when people start mixing it right away, right away they start... You know, they start getting arrogant and they start going, oh, I made this new style. And it's like, dude, really? So keep it separate. Learn the art properly. I'm still trying to learn Eskrima Kali Arnis. After three decades, I'm still trying to learn it as best as I can, as, as pure and as clean as I can. But there's also the other part where I'm making it my own and I'm working on that too. So I'm working on two different things at the same time. And that's okay. That's okay, you know. I think more and more the newer generation is a little bit ADD anyway, so it's all right. You know, we want to multitask or we get bored a lot faster. 
you know, than before. So, you know, if that's the case, then, you know, work on, work on it separately. All right. Um, so he, what he needs to do is ask a bunch of questions. All right. And even within the bags, there's a type of bag that he likes. Okay. So then he has to say to himself, you know, which is optimal? Or do I want to find the best bag and then tell everyone, buy this one? Or do I want to go for more like a generic idea where you don't have to have the exact same bag as me, but if you have the general concept, you're going to be good, you know? So there's different ways to go about it. There's nothing wrong with that as well. Um, and then, uh, this is one of the things I, I told him, what do you put inside the bag, you know? Um, do you put in like a piece that could stop bullets, you know, or stop blades, uh, something really hard like that? Or do you put in something flexible that could still maybe may be able to stop a blade, but it has some kind of flexibility, you know? Um, you don't want to make it too heavy. You know, what, what's a good thing to put in there? Is it books? Is it a hardcover book? Is it a magazine? All those things you want to think thoroughly, thoroughly through, you know? And, and that is what I'm encouraging um, because at the end of the day, it's going to be your logic versus the bad guy's logic and the person that you want to make it strategic battle. So the person who has thought things out more thoroughly, the person who has tested things out, you know, more thoroughly is going to have the advantage. And that's what we want. We wanted a strategic battle rather than a physical battle because chances are the person on the street is your attacker is going to be bigger, stronger and meaner. Right. So, yeah, that is what I'm totally encouraging for him. And, uh, you know, you could think once again, you go, oh, yeah, I think a, a hardcover book may be better. Test it. Don't just think like test it. Like really see how it is. And you might find something like, you know what? The book tends to open up in the bag and then it gets awkward or, you know, whatever it is. So maybe then a rubber band over the book, you know, you, once again, you got to be thorough. Okay. That, that is the, everything, question everything. And you have to have answers for all of it. Why this, why that, you know? And, and once again, the more thorough, we're going to be using that knowledge against the bad guy, right? And, and you want to use as much of this knowledge as possible and leave them in the dark. So, um, yeah, I am trying to encourage that to him. And uh, I encourage that to you all as well. And I try to do that myself. To me, this is the path of a martial artist that wants the practical application part. It's all about being a scientist. So that's it for now. Thank you for viewing and take care, folks.